Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order and the Republic have fallen, with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. This message is a warning and a reminder for any surviving Jedi. Trust in the Force. They've outgrown their age of rebellion, dull the Empire's edge. Defeated Imperial generals and the Pirate Queen's dredge. They've been soldiers and scoundrels, what's there left to be? How about Las Acolytes looking for their Force and destiny? There's a seer, hermit, investigator, and teacher better watch your back or vibe or rings gonna reach you. Will this team find the light or will darkness win the day? Find out with the heroes of the hardy and wave. Previously on Heroes of the Hydean Way, four travelers thrown together by the Force teamed up to try to help the crew of a ship crashed in the jungle. But they were too late. The crew was dead, save one, and the ship tossed in search of a hidden artifact. But it was the travelers, not the pirates, who found the treasure, a holocron occupied by the memory of Soljo Ward. With his guidance, they could learn more about the Force, and themselves, than any cosmic tour had to offer. But are they prepared for the road ahead? Who might they meet on the path? Find out on this week's episode, A Hard Bluff. Welcome to Heroes of the Hydean Way. This is a live play podcast that explores published adventures in the Fantasy Flight Games Star Wars RPG line. And this is our prelude episode four of Chronicles of the Gatekeeper. And I'm Ben, the GM for this adventure. Oh. Oh, he- hello there. It- is that a hollow camera? Neat. Well, well I'm Skip Gobi, the Caloran Seeker Hermit, and- No. Why would I repeat that line? You're rather insistent, aren't you, for such a tiny thing? Ouch! Cash, I I don't know how to talk to Shadra fans. Help! I'll I'll show you how it's done. Now look. I'm Cash, the Trandoshan (laughs) seer, and you are not welcome here, little... What what did you say your name was again? (sighs) Hillary, you're... I'm not being scary enough. You're up. Oh, Kesh. Surely, you know, you don't have to be scary to everyone. (laughs) Hello, fellow. I am Hillary al of the Flying al Perhaps you've heard of us. I am not currently flying. But I am a teacher. And isn't it nice to speak to someone on the right level? I thought so too. Um, Koba, close. But, you know. You know, some some beings are going to take a little bit of offense at you filming everybody. But at least it means there'll be evidence. (laughs) Koba, Koba, introduce yourself. Koba, I, uh, I'm an investigator. Very dramatic. Good one to follow. To learn more about our heroes, we get one to ask another question. And today it is Hillary's turn. So, Kesh. Yes, Hillary? I've been meaning to ask you. That bone cane of yours, where did it come from? I'm just double checking a name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this, this works, but I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with it anyway. <clears throat> well, about the time I started to need one, I was still living on Kashik, and I managed to help in a hunt to take down a Katarn. And uh well, my daughter wanted me to use just some plain old wooden cane, and I was reticent to the idea anyway, so I thought I would fashion one from this latest kill. I think it suits me a good deal better, don't you? Uh, what is a Katarn? It's a large hunting creature on, on Kashik, a repto mammal of some kind. I just... I have to wonder sometimes, you know, should we not come up with a new term for these strange creatures that fit in reptilian and mammalian? I mean, 
I don't know. I've kind of always wanted to be one. How do you think I'd look with a beard? Fetching. Hmm. You just made Hillary very, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary might have to invest in a beard. Oh no. What have I done? <laughs> you encouraged. The four of you are preparing the Guthrock 720 that you had found crashed, getting it ready for a trip off into the ethers of space. Also laying to rest the previous owners that had a few unfortunate encounters before they came into your sphere. Now that laying that crew to rest is mostly done, the question I've got for you, for is you do have this holocron that one might say is incomplete on account of it's got three large holes in it. What in all are the four of you wanting to do? Like, And also, are you wanting to rename the ship? The Silver Chill is what it is currently registered as. Have we searched thoroughly to see if there's if the rest of the holocron is somewhere on the ship? I don't know whether you've looked specifically for pieces for the holocron, but you did do a fairly deep pass for if there was anyone else on the ship and if there was anything that the whoever had boarded here had left things. You hadn't found anything that looks like it would be obviously part of a holocron. Did we uh, open the holocron before? Uh, you had. You had sort of introduced yourself to the gatekeeper of it and then gone off your separate ways. I know when we last left, Skip had the holocron and was rather giving Ward a, a tour rather than asking uh, asking Ward questions about the nature of like the force of the holocron or things like that. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes. Like, yeah. Don't you want to was... learn things? <laughs> Well, it's because I didn't want to do stuff without the rest of you. So I was just, you know, for flavor. Which being totally weird. makes sense. I I love Skip. I want to give Skip a hug. The one thing that I know that the gatekeeper would attempt to do is if the gatekeeper's up and still running, they'd be trying to follow up on something that Koba had said about an empire. Having a holocron being dangerous because this doesn't really compute for them. I'm assuming then that if Skip was still doing the tour, that Ward would be active. Do you want to say maybe the the four of us like come back together and like what passed for like the central room or something after our respective chores? That seems like a good idea. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. What are we calling the middle room? This is actually why I opened it up. I'm assuming we are the hanging problem. out in more of a lounge, really. The lounge, the right? Zocalo. I want an angry dome. <laughs> Is it too late to have one installed? Okay, so we can say like we're maybe gathering. It says the lounge port at 10. And this looks like a bunch of chairs in the picture, but I imagine maybe there's like a little kitchenette or, you know, something else there beyond just. There's, there's a crappy couch. That's what we <laughs> we need, like the friend's couch. No, oh, we'll, we'll it's, it's, hang it's out honestly, there. it's. There's that, like, just sort of a coffee table. It's. <laughs> Whereas the Sky and Fire had this really skookum entertainment area because, well, someone bought it. This one, you've got like the refresher. It's like the meal preparation after Han's been at the Falcon for like two months. Mm -hmm. Essentially a microwave and a small beer fridge. Yeah, it's like one of those apartments that comes with like just a... A tiny fridge and like a, a hot plate and that's it. Yeah, exactly. So it's, like a, a, it's like a dorm. Yes. <laughs> it's furnished with, with a bunch of $5 off the uh, curb chairs, couches, tables, mini fridges. And one of the chairs is definitely a lawn chair. It looks like all the money on this ship went into what was in the cargo hold. That's that's fair. Priorities. Um, and now I really want to play a scavenger. <laughs> I think Hillary, when coming back from the service memorial thing, would have busied himself into not cleaning, but at least tidying. Okay. He he would locate the calf machine and you know start cleaning out the pot so he could have a <laughs> cup of cup of calf that wasn't you know green and growing. Oh yeah. He he actually 
fa- finds a mug and kind of tosses it out of the ship because it, it he's not even going to try and clean it. Do you like penicillin in your calf? Yo! Dun, da, da. Dun, da, da. Where's Cav when you need them? Calf A isn't supposed to jiggle, and B isn't <laughs> supposed to be fuzzy. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll just let this one go. As it starts to move off on its own. <laughs> it retracts it on the ship, and it does something, kind of flops out and starts slinking away like a snail with a mug shell. Watch out, train snakes. <laughs> yep, we have just left an invasive species on Felucia, and it will destroy the ecosystem in the next 20 years. The monoraptor's one one na- natural or quasi-natural enemy. It's a regular, it's a regular <laughs> yeah. slugger right there. So uh, in, our, in our little little lounge area with our yard sale furniture... But the four of us are are gathering. You, Sir Doug, you had said something earlier about a, what did you put it as, an empire. Now, I was wanting to inquire after this on account of the only empire that I'm currently aware of was possibly the one created by the Huts, but they are not a power that one would expect to have across many stars. They are somewhat insular. Otherwise, I would have expected the Republic and the Jedi to take care of anything that would be called an empire. Well, that's the real trick, isn't it? The empire used to be the Republic until the end of the Clone Wars. The Clone Wars are ended? Have been for 20 years. Oh my. Skip is still holding the holocron out, and when it started talking to Koba, just kind of like, you know, scooched it in Koba's direction, still still <laughs> cupping it in their hands. And when it seems like the little the little fella in the holocron is getting upset, uh, Skip is just going to sort of gingerly set it down on the little coffee table and just back away, looking <laughs> very sheepish. As for the Jedi, well, the official story is they tried to overthrow the Republic and were eliminated so that they could not. Whether that's the truth or not, the order is no more. That does sound out of character for most, but the creator of this holocron would most certainly have attempted to guide such a perception and also guide such a reaction, for that is what they were known for. Now, when you say guide, guiding in which way? Like, for the uprising? Or um, for the Republic? Well, you must understand that the information that I have is only as recent as my last contact with Soldier Ward. And in this, Soldier Ward was a dedicated knight of the Jedi and had fought many battles within the Clone Wars. I'm, he possibly could still be alive, although... I guess it has been some time since I was created. He was a loyal Jedi, but he was well known for being able to foresee the future, and not just in the fashions that a normal Jedi could. And with each different person who is talking to the gatekeeper, they will momentarily disappear and then reappear pointed directly at the speaker. No. Pardon my, my ignorance, um, but when you say foreseeing the future, would you care to elaborate? Well, you see, Soldier Ward, in creating this holocron, he did so to store his knowledge, and including the secrets of the Force powers that he developed, he even went to the point of calling it a foresight, Ward's foresight, if you will, though that is somewhat of Soljo's own hubris. Soljo Ward was known for many accomplishments and feats, both before and during the Clone Wars. His greatest contribution to the Jedi Order, however, was his refinement of the ability to predict the future. Although many Jedi are capable of foreseeing future events, Ward's ability was different. Rather than focusing on visions of events yet to come, Ward perceived the future decisions 
actions and intentions of other sentients. Not only could Ward see beyond the lies and deceptions, he could also predict another's decision long before that person even contemplated the matter. Sounds useful. Is that a technique you were taught as well? The secrets of this technique, as well as the most sensitive knowledge Ward possessed, are not contained in this holocron, but in a set of three kyber crystals she created alongside it. This holocron is the only means by which to read these crystals. I don't suppose you know where Ward stashed them. Well, Soto Ward completed the construction of this holocron while on the planet Arbuin. He entrusted one of the crystals to a young Force-sensitive Mary Allen named Gail Markov. He saw great potential in this Markov, whom he hoped would become his Padawan. Ward kept the other crystals with him, and where they are now, I cannot say. If you hope to learn this technique beyond his basic predictive abilities and unlock the full potential of this holocron, you must travel to Arbuin to retrace Master Ward's steps. To what end? You don't think being able to see the future would be valuable? Just don't know what we'd do with it if we could. Besides, I don't really believe in destiny. And yet, here we are aboard a crashed ship in the middle of nowhere with a mystical device with unique information with four people potentially capable of using it. How can you not believe in destiny? Galaxy's a big place. There's a lot of crashed ships in the middle of nowhere. Now, Koba, you don't believe in destiny, do you? But do you believe in mysteries? Yes. Would you say that you like investigating mysteries? I see what you're trying to do. <laughs> I am merely... Pursuing a line of inquiry, I think you'd call it. Look, I have my own reasons for following this thing. Maybe I just want to know where everybody else stands. Well, as Kesh knows, I've got nothing better to do. So I would like to go and pursue this mystery wherever it takes us. If it happens to take us to those who perpetrated these... Acts of darkness on this ship, more's the better. I was looking for a sign, and I think I found it. I'm in. What about you, Skip? You've been quiet. And what about you, Skip? Oh, I don't have anything better to do. <laughs> <laughs> then it sounds like we're bound for Arbuin. And in summary, Points at Cash. Faith. Points at Gillery. Hillary. Boredom. <laughs> points at Skip. Also boredom. Oh, I'm not bored. <laughs> Dare say I'm not either. I'm just interested in a new activity. I'm just really excited to meet all of you. You seem all very interesting. And, you know, Gudge and I needed something to do after this for the impromptu vacation that we took. Skip's just jazzed to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's very meta. <laughs> Do any of you know how to fly this thing? Oh, I'm sorry, what? Do any of you know how to fly this ship? Well, I've never flown a ship like this exactly, but I'm sure I could probably figure it out. Give it a real solid try. Great, you're hired. Figure out how to get us in the air. Wait, like a job? Not like a paying one, like a like a job <laughs> aboard the ship. We're all going to work together on this. So I'm assuming we each have different strengths to bring to the table. Congratulations, you're an intern. <laughs> 
Not, not really. Intern is, is barely a step above custodian. Custodians get paid. I've never been a custodian either. <laughs> well, right now you are a pilot and I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> That's for sure. <sighs> Skip's eyes will get kind of wide and then they'll just uh, book it <laughs> to the pilot's seat area. Wow, pilot's seat area. It's got <laughs> a name, Ren. Wow. Yes, it's the pilot seat area. Clearly, <laughs> it's the area for the pilot seat. <laughs> Good old, yeah, good old PSA. <laughs> Wait, is that what Baron was doing that whole time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, as, as Skip leaves for the cockpit, uh, Cash looks over at, at Hillary and asks, do you think you could help me up? I don't think I can get out of this couch on my own. <laughs> <laughs> it did sink rather a lot when you said. <sighs> um, Yes, let me just, I'll get my feet against the, the front of the couch, and I'll lean forward, and you use my shoulder. Okay? okay. Three? This is very exciting. I've never, ever used this sort of skill set in this game before. Oh, yeah, Ren. In the this particular one, on account of it is the first time Skip is using this ship, not having flown it at all. I do think that it should be a pilot space roll. A okay, one red and one purple. Is there a co-pilot seat? Yes. Um, in that case, can I assist? Yep. Koba doesn't have any piloting skill, but he has decent agility, and Doug are born with defensive driving, which won't help in this case. But so, so you follow when Skip uh, takes off in. Tiny, tiny fear of Kesh. Uh, he might not go immediately, but certainly at that's once the engines start to fire up. Why don't you start flipping switches? <laughs> Kobe will sort of grumble into the pilot seat area and take the um second seat. What What do you bring into the to the dice pool table? Uh, just a boost. Just boost in your your effort. Assisting. Right. But good news, if we need to, Kapow. if we need, if we get shot ah! up, uh, we have an extra. Guess what? All Guess right. What? Okay. What'd you on. get? Well, I am just following the amazing Heidi and Way footsteps of Cav. Oh, hey, teasing. sorry, Miss Gand <laughs> is deeply insulted somewhere in the galaxy. <laughs> well, to to fly this lovely uh, turtle shaped vessel, skip. Has received a failure, but to advantage. So I'm thinking that in this case it is going to be just a very ungraceful liftoff. Like one of the things I had to get done was this fallen over fungus stock had to get moved off, and I'm sort of figuring that like this ship bumps into that, rolling it, causing it to swing around into a few others almost hitting the mystery machine as he starts <laughs> lifting up more. Anyone looking out, you can see Shags and Scoob in the back just sort of waving, and you can see three others have joined them from the forest. As you get the flipper engines going, I, I just love the ship. I love it. Yeah. I'm in love with the ship too. It's amazing. It makes no sense. Don't quite judge it quite right. And instead of going up enough, you skim across the top of one of these giant fungus, causing it to wobble on its stock, and then off into the great blue-green yonder. As we are, are about to, to hit into the great blue-green yonder, Hillary appears at the, the door to the pilot seating area. <laughs> and, I'm never um, going to live that down, apparently. Nope. It's in the notes. <laughs> th th <laughs> this is the, how right the, the sky is on fire jokes begin. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, you know, you, you've just hit the, the, the one shroom that you're hitting on the way out, and there's that kind of wobble, and Hillary kind of almost stumbles, but makes it up to the ship, and or to the, to the seat, has one, one hand 
on the seat, one hand on your shoulder. It's a good try. Just remember, take a deep breath and aim. <laughs> Leslie. And I'll take the strain for my encouraging words. <laughs> Kobo probably face palms at this point. <laughs> hey. I'm not a good flyer, but I still taught my kids what all the buttons do on their their little learning consoles. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, no, Skip is very excited. That didn't that didn't really deter Skip. Skip uh, will look back at Hillary. Yes, I mean I- I've definitely done worse. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's that that hint of a flicker of what have we gotten into in in the corner of one of Hillary's eyes, but he he kind of lets it go. Because, you know, we're going to be great. My next question is, since three out of the four of you are in the cockpit, is Kesh also going to drop by? Like, there's four seats up there, kind of like the Falcon, so. After a while, because she gets lonely, although she'll never admit it. Mm-hmm. So we'll come up to see, uh, what's taking so long? And we'll uh, take the fourth seat. <laughs> and Hillary smiles because he knows exactly why you're there. <laughs> But he won't out you. Skip is just humming. Flicking <laughs> buttons. So this is going to be a astrogation check. How about I just open it up to the floor as to who wants to fish for boost dice? On account of player ideas for getting boost dice, there's a lot better than GM ones. Um, okay. Yeah, Skip's not very smart, so <coughs> astrogation is not my best thing. Tell me about Arboing real quick. Is that one that I would have been, like, in my travels? Is it something that I would have been anywhere near? It is a relatively lesser known place. If someone were willing to do, like, a knowledge out or rim check, uh, definitely. Like, I do have some stuff that I can give, but it, like, generally, of the thousands of planets, it's pretty out of the way and relatively unremarkable. It's somewhat insular. I'm certainly game for a knowledge check. Considering all the crud I just said, I'm just going to go with an average with a setback. Okay. I'm going to use Talk the Talk to flip a destiny point. Did we ever tell them what our destiny pool was? Well, oh, I don't know if we did. <laughs> I forgot to do my job. It was I'm two light it. side and three dark side, but now <laughs> now it's one light side and four dark side. Yay! Yeah. Um, so I'll be using uh, Q Ben Streetwise instead of Knowledge Underworld, and because of Street Smarts, I remove a setback from Streetwise and Knowledge Underworld checks. So I'm now just doing a average Streetwise, I believe. Bingo. On account of its four destiny points, I am tempted to upgrade it. I, I'm i not. I wouldn't have counted it against you. I'll upgrade the next thing. <laughs> three successes and a threat. So is that like three truths and a lie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just tell me four things about Arbuin, and one of them is just not true. That is a possibility. I, I love that. That sounds great. That terrifies me. But at the same time, I do kind of support it. So Arbuin... I am going to twinge at that name for a long while, is located far spinward in, in galactic east of the reaches of the Outer Rim, joined to the Krillian Run by the much lesser known Diophos Spur. Time gang there is generally, it is what Kashyyyk used to be. It is a tree planet. You know how Star Wars has mono environments? Yeah. Well, this one's the tree planet. I had I had a suspicion because of the name. I mean, that's fair, but why used to be on Kashyyyk? Because Kashyyyk now just has really large trees and like a lot of water. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's actually multi biome. Yeah, it's weird. Shenanigans. One of the weirdest parts that come out of the prequels trilogy. Yeah. The other hand, that was coastal, so we've got no real ideas further inland. But that's an entirely different thing. One of the things that is well known is that it is it is a forest planet, and it has giant trees. Like, it's kind of hard to understate how tall these trees are, because you're talking, like, two, three kilometer tall trees. 
and the planet itself is pretty much covered. Like there is enough sunlight to get through to have actual plant life underneath, but there is a great amount of impenetrable or semi-impenetrable tree coverage on it. Landing is in fits and starts. Like you pretty much have to find your own landing spot. Most climbing gear would not be long enough. Otherwise, it does have a native species there called the Sathari. <laughs> that they are a avian species that actually can glide. Like gargoyles. I thought they really turned to rock. Unless I think they turn to rock because I have a threat. <laughs> 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 They're generally predisposed to cool temperaments, but many Sathari take any insult against their clan really, really, really seriously. Kind of remind me of Klingons in a lot of ways. Maybe not the whole warrior part, but the whole honor part. It kind of seems very klingon -y. The Zathri, they really value their family and clan almost above pretty much anything else to the point where they'll protect clan and accept things to protect the clan. But also, it's pretty out of the way. They're generally of brittle bone structure, so they're not that great <laughs> as a, um, shall we say, worker group. Last thing the Koba knows, is, or has heard, is that these can be very cool to outsiders, at least according to the notes that Koba has had. I've uh, been near Arborween before, and a friend who used it as a little bit of a bolt hole and Bounty hunters or uh, Imperial inspectors got a little too close. Never been there myself, but trees, it's uh, inhabited by birds who are kind of ornery. <laughs> birds. By, by birds or, or like a, or more like bird sentience? Well, you think birds can't be sentient? No, I'm... <laughs> <sighs> Fine. Ornery birds. Point big. Go on. I uh I remember my friend's um directions included a few minor astrogation shortcuts that helped the passage, so I will relay those to you, Skip. <laughs> for a boost, I hope. I forgot that, that that is this is what we were even aiming towards. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, totally can do that. Totally can do that, yeah. Don't mind me. It's not like I am just attempting to get images of things. Are are, are we going to be doing another um, space piloting check, or were my encouraging words for not? This was astrogation. Yeah, yeah like... it will be astrogation, and I'm assuming the encouraging words shall be useful there. That's what's sad. I, I'm just being generally supportive. And gripping very tightly on the seat. What does encouraging words do again? I do not recall. It just... After an engaged ally fails a check, may suffer one strain to assist the ally's next check, this encounter as an out-of-turn incidental. So yeah, you'll get a boost from Hillary as oh, well. Okay. I'm helping. Inle unless mm -hmm. I presume Hillary's intelligence or uh, astrogation. Yeah, good point. Uh, let's be honest. I, I fly in ships. Yeah. I don't fly Probably. ships. <laughs> I I wasn't sure I'm if maybe you I'm a natural born left. passenger. I let other others get on along with the uh, whole piloting thing. Yeah, I'm not usually you know, aiming for a specific direction. I just kinda go where I want to. So uh I'll try. What's my difficulty? <laughs> it will be one red one purple difficulty, because I am using that destiny point. Nice, nice. All right. So as Skip says that they will try, I'm hitting the button. And all <laughs> dice have canceled out. Oh, yeah. I'm impressed. Okay, Good it's team. been three days. I think we're still going in circles. You know whose fault this is. <laughs> Look at those beautiful blank boosts. Uh, Cash didn't whose fault contribute. Is this? Everybody, <laughs> what do you want me to everybody do? Everybody else was helping. Cash. <laughs> I've got cabin fever. 
I want to point out, oh, both of those God, boosts you... were blank anyway, so nobody held. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three days sounds right. At the end of the three days, the down jump from hyperspace has happened, and you get to see the wondrous planet of Arbuene, where you can't see rivers on the planet, but generally it is a tree world. Yeah, like, uh, you know, it took us longer because, like, I remembered that there was this really pretty uh, cluster of rocks. And then, you know, nobody was particularly impressed that I showed them that. And then we moved on. Yeah, we we detoured to see the galaxy's biggest ball of yarn. (laughs) You know, I was really expecting it to be bigger. I mean, it was barely the size of the monoraptors. I I, I just assumed that you would think. Because it's very, you're very, you know what, I'm going to, hmm, all right. I just can't figure out why the it's Imperials right, would use yarn to build a battle station. <laughs> that's no moon, that's a yarn ball. Oh gosh, is this space balls? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, did we hit plaid? <laughs> anyway, three days later, we see a yes. tree planet. <laughs> As you drop out of hyperspace, I'm assuming everyone's up in the cockpit on account of it's got the best windows. And you can act, everyone can actually see things as you down jump from hyperspace. There before you is the green and blue marble that is Arbuene. There I'm figuring on the dash in between the pilot and co-pilot. So between Skip and Koba, the holocron sitting and flickers on. This time pointing at in front. Ah, uh, yes, Arbuene. What a story that Soldier Ward had before getting here. Are you going to tell us the story? Yeah, go go on. <laughs> yes. Soldier Ward met Joe Markov when they were attacked by Separatist assassins on Eriadu, and he had since the young Mary Allen was strong in the force. He hoped to induct him into the Jedi Order and perhaps even take him on as a Padawan after the war, as of my creator have. However, Ward had not yet explained this to Markov. He was not yet mature enough. Then, flickering in, turning back to the four of you, the gatekeeper crosses his arms and gazes at the four of you. Head goes down for a moment or two, then head goes up, like... He's mimicking, remembering things. Soja Ward had Markov with him when he headed to Arbuin to set the groundwork for a Republic base. The area surrounding the town of Kulas was an ideal location. At the time, Republic intelligence indicated that Kulas was torn by a violent feud between two families, those of the Helsha and the Tumoris. The Sathri of Kortas are fundamentally good people, but prone to long-held grudges. Ward brought Markov with him in the hopes that the young man might learn something about conflict resolution and the real responsibilities of a Jedi Knight. As this has been going on, you've been getting closer and closer to the planet, like just sort of doing the getting into the planet's atmosphere. As you break through Arboine's atmosphere, a dense, almost impenetrable canopy of green spreads out before you, broken here and there by mountains and massive lakes. The gatekeeper provides you with the coordinates for the town of Kotas, but when you arrive, the thick foliage prevents you from visually confirming the settlement's exact location, or even existence, really, let alone being able to land there. Finally, you spot a clearing along the bank of a river, several kilometers from where you believe the town to be. Looks like we're going to have a little bit of a hike. Yeah, I I mean, I'm not really all that great at landing, but I think that's probably our best option. We'll, we'll make do. Well, I for one would not like to jump out of the ship, so I support Landon. Oh gosh, no, what? who would ever jump out of the ship at this height? Idiots. The people who would jump, not not you. Oh, it's all right. I've been called worse. <laughs> oh. Is a walk going to be a problem for you, Kesh? I'll manage. All right. Skip's going to do their sin. best. <laughs> oh, I'm suddenly scared that I took pilot stuff. <laughs> right? It's There's a big so responsibility. 
I will never tease Cav again. Uh, oh, that we, you know, that's a lie. For, for that, for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Specific thing. Yeah, I'm wanting to get a one red, one purple pilot space roll to land. Again, probably not going to wreck the ship or anything, but. Yeah, all right. I'd love it if we just crashed. Doing every the planet. thing. <laughs> yeah! All right, I got two successes and just one tiny little threat. Just one. Very excited. Okay, uh, do you want to describe this one, Ren? Of how you're landing uh, on this riverbank? Yeah, okay. So, Skip, after that little conversation with Kesh and company, after saying that they're not very good at it, you know, they're they're not that bad at it, but they're, you know, trying to, trying to downplay so that in case they messed up, you know. <laughs> the landing is mostly good. In fact, it would have been good if at the very last minute, Skip hadn't seen some little creature of local wildlife and then have to make a really kind of last minute jerk to the left to avoid hitting it. And so they do they do kind of bump and 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 hit and kind of like uh, create some like little grooves into the ground where they landed just like slightly cockeyed but they land they stop and Skip turns around and says yeah that was pretty good landing (laughs) that it was you did very well did you see that thing out there um Hillary kind of looks at his his vantage point (laughs) compared to the the window (laughs) I'm afraid I missed it you'll have to point it out when we're off the ship it, it it probably ran off. That was probably kind of loud. <laughs> yes, I imagine so. Hey Ben, hey. could we collect like a little like bag worth of? Is there any like food or water we can sort of gather up here? Absolutely. Okay. Cash will go in and prepare some kind of like a little satchel or something full of some supplies and swing it over top of her shoulder. In Skip's little backpack of randomosity. Uh, I already had purchased some ration packs for that, so I'll I'll consider them good. Okay. Does Skip also have a yo-yo? I feel like Skip needs a yo-yo. <laughs> Find out later. If the need arises. Around the world. <laughs> Is there anything that you're going to do on the ship before heading off? I will pack up my awesome little backpack briefcase, which I haven't had a chance to describe, but I'll tell you all now. I wear suspenders with that X in the back and my briefcase, which is what it looks like. It looks like like a little schoolboy's briefcase from like the 1900s or something, but it has a magnetic thing. So it just clamps onto my back like a backpack when I want it to. (sighs) Yeah. No, I'm that cool, man. That's amazing. (laughs) So I have, like, granola bars or <laughs> something like that in there. Oh, that's wonderful. Then you've got dapper little Hillary ready to go spelunking in his pinstripes <laughs> and spats. <laughs> On a planet where the plants are probably larger than he is. Probably. Or fortunately, the plants are probably larger than all of us, so at least I won't look out of place. <laughs> Uh, Kesh is going to take up the um, the new staff that she found aboard the ship last time, the one with the Trindoshan and Nikto markings and all that. Okay. To use as a, as a, as a walking stick as we proceed. And Skip is going to turn to everyone else and say, uh, should we take the box with the, our little friend in it? That's probably a good idea. Should we kind of wrap it up in a scarf or something and stick it in one of our bags? Go for it. All right. I I think we might want Ward there as a guide when we reach certain parts of our destination. Also, I don't want to leave it behind for someone else to find. Right. I just kind of figured if we were walking around just sort of talking to him, then if anybody was in this woods... Anybody was in these, you know, woods that wanted to steal stuff. Uh, I think that probably would look like a really fun thing to steal. So maybe not carrying it around, I guess. <laughs> that seems a prudent choice. Well thought of, Skip. Pat, Pat. Oh, 
So Never why don't you before. wrap it and put it in your bag, Skip? You can be the, the box holder. All right. There you go. Another job for you. Skip is so excited for this. <laughs> uh, finds the like most ugly piece of cloth, random random cloth that that they can find to wrap this thing in. Uh, it's a floral so print shirt. Very not. A, yes, perfect. It's <laughs> so a floral it print sweater. Uninteresting. Ooh. <laughs> Ties it up in this sweater and stuffs it in the bag. Nice. Covers it with the ration packs. Does Koba carry a bag? Uh, no. Koba does have a utility belt, though. Well, you need one for your uh, your uh, vibro rings. Yeah, Koba doesn't carry any sort of bag, but his vest sort of thing, because Doug are weird, they can't really wear normal clothes, <laughs> has a utility belt fastened across it. Maybe more of a bandolier sort of situation. Yes, I support it. With a couple vibro rings, like, stuck in, um, they wouldn't be, like, leather loops or whatever, because vibro rings would cut right through those, but some sort of... They're like magnets, yeah. just, they clip on. Doop. And, uh, his pistol at his side. It's a revolver, in case anybody's curious. Because it's gotta One be. One of his pockets on the utility belt probably has bullets. <laughs> it's not just a revolver, it's, it's a literal... It's a slug thrower. That's so. awesome. Do they talk? You look so cool. No, not not as far as I'm aware. Oh, and just because we're going for the descriptions, I guess, Skip is also carrying a very long uh, rifle. I think I am going to get a hard survival check from the group. Well, I hate to tell you this, but you might not be surprised to know that I offer nothing. Yeah, I have a too cunning, no, no skill at present. I have two cunning and one rank. All eyes look to Brandon. <laughs> I have a four cunning and no rank. Well, we've got my rank, then. That's one and three. Yeah. Could be worse. No, uh, well, I've got four cunning, so it's one and four. Right. All right, it sounds like Koba and Skip are taking the lead here. You want to roll this? I've made a okay. bunch of rolls, so you can you can go right ahead. Take take my yellow die. Enjoy. Right. Uh, difficulty, Ben? <laughs> it is going to be a one red, one purple, because I misread things. I was about to say, you're dark siding, aren't you? Well, if it was a hard yeah. check, I wasn't going to, but since it's a average check, yes. I thought you said it was a hard Yeah, I misread. Two advantage. Oof. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, didn't you say you had to roll four green? No, I, my cunning is four. Oh, oh, okay. But I have sorry. no ranks. So with your rank, right, right. one of them mm-hmm. is yellow. This is going to be that kind of kind of season. <laughs> you mean like most seasons? Like like every season of this show, yep. We're very new. We don't have a lot of skills yet. I, I've, You guys haven't heard it yet, but in my character preamble ramble letter thing, I make a whole... Side note about how I'm much much more comfortable with my feet on the grates than the ground. So, <laughs> super not my world. With what I'm about to read off, <laughs> I'm thinking that this is going to be a great. Oh my gosh. Place to sorry. end. I'm Brooke Leslie, I'm sorry. Dork. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah dork. Oh, it wouldn't have been so bad if I didn't have a mouthful of coffee. <laughs> This is perfect. Alright. So, the four of you come uh, to a cliff that blocks your path, and you find yourself at the base of it. You can either go to your left or right, but it looks like that's going to take a long time, because you can just sort of see this ridge that there's a lot of trees that seem to be going up along the side, but it's a somewhat sheer bluff. There's a lot of handholds and that sort of thing, but you'd actually have to climb it or go around, essentially. You can even see some of these runners from these giant trees seeming to be sticking out the side of the cliff in a few different places. But generally, it looks to be pretty solid. As the four of you come up to the base of that and look up, off in the far distance, you hear, Rawr! of something. So, I imagine when you have trees this big, you have creatures 
suitably sized for them? Uh, usually. Well, how tall is the cliff range man wise? I am going to go with it is medium sized. Okay, perfect. Oh uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds really big. <laughs> it is. But not when you trust in the force. But apparently not too big. <laughs> oh, no. No, that was Skip in response to the growl. Oh. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's, that's a good. Um, I, I dare say um, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you. Should we try to climb? Um, on one hand, I feel it would put us at a very convenient biting height. But on the other, it seems slightly more expeditious than the other options. Uh, Ben. Yo. Could I, because after our last XP gain, I picked up Synths. Could I make a force check to use Synths? Absolutely. What range are you going for? Uh, right now it's just short range. I don't have the option of doing anything else, so... Fair enough, fair enough, It's, fair it's enough. probably not going to ping much of anything, but still going to try. Because I don't have any um, upgrades yet. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. All right. But you most certainly can do it. So Koba probably unholsters his gun. And then while Skip and uh, Hillary are, are talking, he closes his eyes and reaches out with the force. And I got a dark side point. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use that. <laughs> so, I will spend that dark side point by uh, suffering a strain and gaining a conflict, flipping a destiny point, to sense all living things within short range. All right. So, so everything within short range. Yep. So, there you are standing before the cliff. You can feel the roots beneath you and beside you, and you can feel the trees. You can even feel some of those runners running from the trees and like roots essentially turning into other trees and inside the base of a tree to your left you can feel three infants of some native species but no parents of some native native species correct i think they want they want to move sooner than later uh, uh agreed hillary do you want me to try to uh Get you up quickly, or... I'm not worried about a little bit of climbing, my dear. I'm quite quite adept, believe it or not. All right. He cracks his tiny little knuckles. Everybody Shall up. We? All right. In that case, can I get a average athletics check from each of y'all? Yeah. Uh, sure. May I uh, finagle... Coerce, wheedle, beg my way to coordination. Well, you're going to have to describe how you're using that instead of athletics. Well, instead of, like, pushing and reaching, I'm actually just kind of feeling for handholds and kind of, instead of going for a direct path, I'm scuttling kind of side to side, playing to my short-armed advantages and using the runners to uh, kind of guide me. Oh, uh, so you're kind of parkouring it, like, sort of I'm, I'm i'm like i'm bouncing more than pushing okay fair enough fair enough fair enough like yes you absolutely can do it okay so yeah so if, if hillary can use coronation then, then cash will start to climb okay and i would toss in a setback to hillary's average check but that's about it that's fine yep good job wheedling <laughs> So, how about we get the results for our listeners? Koba fails. <laughs> uh, Skip has one success and two threat. Cash has one success. Uh, I failed once, but I failed. Cash makes it up in a very solid fashion. Like, very experienced at climbing and able to pull their way up finding handholds and moving and claws helping a bit. Then Skip is able to make their way up a little bit after, but had taken a bit of a slip. When they're reaching up, there was some like gravel on the top of a handhold and 
went to pull on it, hang, slipped off, causing, yeah, I'm going to go with just the simple way of doing the two strain. Then as Hillary and Koba are making their way up, I'm going to go with something kind of similar, but it's more having to catch themselves on one arm in both cases. Like Hillary bouncing, 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 goes out to set up on one of these runners and it isn't a solid. It must be a new runner, not quite up to the same age as the rest, so it doesn't have enough bark. And it just sort of slips and then Hillary's able to grab it, but it recovers. And then Koba, I'm figuring, pulls a Kirk and is going up instead of one hand or foot losing grip in this case it's three where the only thing is is one hand holding on to the rock face then they're able to recover and get up to the top of the cliff face so there's a four of you i'm not quite sure well no let's see that would be like cash is up at the top the other three are like this is not sort of normal daily training so there's I'm guessing panting as like the adjusting, like stretching out limbs and that sort of stuff from the extensions and that. And I'm going to go with two wounds each for Koba and Hillary. Would, uh, would I have had time to heal the wounds I had before we left Felicia? Yes. The the grievous, uh, ladder, ladder induced ones. You you two don't get out much, do you? Hillary makes a face, but he doesn't say anything. He just gives her this stink eye. listening to this episode of Heroes of the Hydean Way. You can find show updates on Twitter at The Hydean Way, and you can find me, Ben, on Twitter at Deuterium Ice. You can find me, Ren, at Atomic Firebird on Twitter, or if you want to see the various projects I'm up to, you can go to at make underscore believe RP. And you can find me, Christine, on Twitter at Twelfth Night. That's one, two, T-H and night with a K. Uh, in addition to this show, I have two D&D 5e actual play podcasts. Uh, the Glass Dagger can be found at completenight.com, also night with a K. And Omen's Call can be found at omenscall.com. Not with a K. Not with a K. Uh, I remain as ever Leslie GS and um, still hanging out with my pod family on here and Soul Zero and Force... Mm, I always do that. Love, love for the force majeure, but I mean to say flight risk, because that's where I've been. And I'm on Twitter at Blue of the Kin, and also I have a uh, Star Trek Adventures podcast called Endeavor Through the I'm yeah, excited. Endeavor Through the Maelstrom. You can find out more about that uh, via Twitter at Endeavor Show. That's E E N D E A V O U R Show, uh, or in your podcast outlet of choice probably definitely confidence yes. <laughs> well unless i mean i don't know what they may they might choose a weird one like like google podcasts excuse you <laughs> do not mock my overlord or stitcher is stitcher <laughs> still a thing i they think like to not say they're list. a thing I was going to make up one be like Pod Snatcher, but I feel like that might actually be a thing. <laughs> I think it is. Podcast shows just show up on everything. I've got no idea how anymore. Anyway, we are all at thehydeanway.com where you can find previous episodes. You can also find more episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, which is apparently where Leslie finds them. <laughs> Plus, you can help us out by rating, reviewing, and subscribing. We're also on Facebook as Heroes of the Hydean Way. You can holocom us at heroes at the Or 
Um, oh, sorry, Leslie, I was skipping you. No, nope. <laughs> no, nope. that's okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and get you know crapped on because of my. I wouldn't. I won't even say brand loyalty, uh, because that implies a lot more choice than I have. Uh, if you like what we do and want to support the show, you can find us at patreon.com slash hero here no Heidi and way i don't have it open by the way patreon.com okay. slash the Heidi and way thank is you brandon. the Heidi and way okay like brandon said or you can toss a cred to your podcaster at ko-fi.com slash the Heidi and way Brandon, at some point, I just want to have Koba go, Metal Gear. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. That's how I get ready for his voice. So I just talk about Metal Gear. Is it solid? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not necessarily. Could be Acid. <laughs> that was a game series that nobody remembers. Probably well, that was a reason. handheld one, I think. Yeah, it was a <laughs> PSP-like... Yeah. Card game version of Metal Gear? What? Metal Gear Acid, yeah. I'm not making it up. It's a thing that existed. <laughs> and today it is Guillory's turn. Hillary's turn? Sorry. Hillary's turn. The G is mostly silent. I think it's pronounced G <laughs> Hillary. <laughs> I guess it's like, like a dash, basically. <laughs> you always have to say it like it's like it's an anime character. Yeah. <laughs> G Hillary. <laughs> Yeah. So this is the power of G Hillary. <laughs> Brandon and I may have been watching too much Gundam. <laughs> may. Um, okay. So Cash. Yes. Damn, dang it. Now I'm doing the Metal Gear voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are more of a snake than others. Yeah. Dee, 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 dee. I, hmm. What? Is a Katarn? It's a Powerful large Jedi pred- of some kind. <laughs> what? <laughs> I I don't I don't know what you're talking about. We're punchy today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we listened to the train. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were back on Ord Mantel. No, there's a uh, on Felicia. There are uh, uh, train snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. That's their hunting cry. Yeah. Yeah, when you hear a train, when you hear the, the horn, you really gotta get out of there because the train snake is somewhere near. Yeah. On the hunt. Locally known as the monoraptor. <laughs> monoraptor. Monoraptor. Uh, I hear those damn train snakes coming again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really comfortable with the monoraptors. Um, should we close the ramp? <laughs> Probably a good idea. <laughs> too big to fit up the ramp. I hope they're too small, though, to swallow the ship whole. Not positive. They can unhinge their jaw pretty wide. Heidi Heidi spot, but, um, Heidi spot. Is that like the pilot seating area? It's close. 